we say Allah. Okay, so that's God to the Muslims. Some say it's not even the God of the Christians and so on. It's just a God. Some even said it's a moon God. But let us now look at the linguistic of the word Allah. It in itself is the beauty of Islam. Because the word in Arabic doesn't mean God. Just in case you thought it did, it doesn't. Because we have a word in Arabic for the word in English, God. It's called Elah. Elah, God. God, Elah. That's the word. But when we speak about the one and only God, the one that's to be worshipped, the God of Adam, the God of Abraham, and the God of Moses, God of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and the God of Muhammad, peace be upon him, we're talking about essentially the only God that's worthy to be worshipped. No other God. Now, what would be the proof of this? I, I realize that we have a lot of detractors who will say, no, 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 it's not true, I don't believe it. Let's uh, get a proof from the English translation of the Bible. That's a good place to start. Around the earth, there are many hotels and motels. In almost every one of them that you go to, there's a drawer beside the bed that when you open it up, you'll find a book in there and you'll take it out. Now, what is that book? And you already know the answer. It's the Bible. It's the Gideon publication of the King James Version of the Bible. The Gideons are very proud of it because they've translated it into so many languages. If you'll turn a few pages right in the beginning, you'll find examples of the translation to Chinese and Korean and into Urdu, the language of Pakistan. You'll find it into Tamil. You'll find it translated into Afrikaans language, which happens to be the first. And the second language translated to is Arabia, Arabic. And there is an example of each one of these languages from the verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And you know it very well. For God so loved the world. That's how it begins. And if you look in the Arabic language, the example that they gave in that Bible, it says Allah. Allah. That's what it says. For Allah so loved the world. So if it's not the same God, then why? All over the entire earth, everywhere I go, I find this exact same word being used in the Bible of the Christians. Now you might say, oh, well, uh, what about the Old Testament? Page one of the book of Genesis, of the very beginning of the Quran, page one has 17 verses. <clears throat> and there's the word Allah, Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha. 17 times. So just as it's the God for the children of Israel in Arabic language, and it's the God for the Arabs who are Christians, it's also the same God for the Muslims. The word is Allah. Why Allah? Why is it important to have this particular word, and why don't we have it in English? Now, I want to come to the etymology of the word. It comes from the word Elah, and Elah means God. But God is defined as what? Anything that's worshipped, whether it be something you can see or you don't see, something you can touch or not touch, something that you can hear or not hear. A God could be anything. A God could be a rock, a stick, a stone, a bone. A God could be something that you can make with your hands. A God can be something you could use your imagination for. It could be a human being. A God could be anything. G-O-D, God, could be anything. But there is no word in English for Allah. So when you translate the word Allah to be God, you've actually diminished the meaning of Allah. That's why whenever you translate the Bible from English to Arabic, you need to use the word Allah instead of God with a big G which now gives us a clue to the problem. In the English language, they only have one word, God. Little g-o-d. It means something worshipped. It could be idols, images, pictures, statues. It could be human beings. It could be anything. This is God's. Little g-o-d-s. But when you mean the God, you have to capitalize the g. You have to make a big g. 
Now, what happens if you're going to start the sentence with the word God? You have to make a big G anyway, don't you? So you wouldn't know if it was God, big God, or God, a little God, just any old God. You wouldn't know. Also, whenever you're speaking to someone, they can't see the letters. So when you say God, which God? What God are you talking about? In Arabic, though, it's clear. When you say Elah, okay, he's talking about a God. And Allah is an Elah. But he's also Alilah, the only Elah. And when you say Allah, this firms it up. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that you're talking about the one and only God. The word Allah in the Arabic language cannot be made plural. There can't be more than one. Okay, that perfectly fits the unique God of the believers. Because there's not more than one. He's only one. There's no God beside God. Second point is this. It can't be made female or male. There's no gender to the word. In Arabic, all the words have gender. All words have gender. But this particular word is only having gender because of the Arabic language, not because Allah has gender. i give you an example. It always is like Allah who. This means Allah he is. But when we say he, it's out of respect for Allah because Allah is without gender because he's not like his creation, not male, not female. Additionally, we find that the uh, examples in Quran, for instance, when Allah is talking about himself, you'll find it says Nahnu. Nahnu means we. And Allah refers to himself as Nahnu. He also says Khalakna. He says Khalakna. What does that mean? He's saying that we created. And throughout the Quran, you find Allah referring to himself as we, our, and us. And right away, you're going to say, okay, if that's not plural, then what is? In fact, this is the royal we used by a king or a queen when they're giving decrees. We have it in English, too, so you can understand. The king says, we decree the following, and he's talking about himself. It's the royal we. Now, I thought about this quite a bit, and I was trying to think, how could I give a better example? After all, most of us, myself included, never met a king, never met a queen, and so I'm not really familiar with that usage. Although it's there, I'm not sure what you're talking about. So, then, in studying the English language, we find that it's true that we do that when we speak to someone directly. Watch this. When I say, for instance, this cup. <clears throat> Okay, I would say, this is a cup. This is a cup of tea. I would say, this book is. I would say, those uh, artifacts are. Those are. This is. These are. So I'm saying, is and are. Did you catch this now? These things are. This is. Now when I speak to a human being, how do I do this? Well, I will say, you guys, all of you are. All of you are. A-R-E. But when I speak to somebody directly, do I say you is or you are? I will say you are. Why? Simply because this is the respect, honor, and dignity that I'm giving. There's no plural there. When I say to you, you are my friend. You are a lovely person. But why am I saying are? Why aren't I saying is? You is my friend. You is a lovely person. Huh. You'll say, man, this guy doesn't know English language. And in fact, that's how we can understand this usage of we and our when Allah is talking about himself. This is the same as when I say I. I don't say I is. I say I am. And again, it's to show the, not plural, but rather the specific nobility, dignity, and honor that you give to the one who's speaking about himself and to the one he's speaking to. And in the same way, that's exactly what Allah is doing when he says, Nahnu and Halakna and other examples throughout the Quran. So now what we've learned is that Allah's name itself is the perfect name for Allah. It is something that is so fantastic to describe who he is and who he isn't. The one and only God. There's none other like him. 
nothing like unto him, Allah, and at the same time, the dignity, the royalty, the honor that you do him is contained in his name. Not like anything else, not male, not female, and yet he is the all Allah, the only God. Please subscribe to our channel. Kindly like, share, and comment on our videos. If anyone benefits because of your like and share, then God may provide you with unlimited reward which is called Sadaqat al Jariyah in Islam. Sadaqat al Jariyah is continuous rewards received for good actions, deeds, and spreading knowledge. It is a gift that not only benefits us in this life, but also benefits us and our loved ones in the hereafter. According to the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated by Muslim. When a person dies, all the deeds end except three. A continuing charity, beneficial knowledge, and a child who prays for them.